originally just supposed to be a Boku no Pico video. Keep that in mind. Ladies, gentlemen, I'm a man of simple tastes. There are only two things that will keep me loving a movie. A, it's fun all around. It keeps having fun with itself and it keeps me having fun with myself. Wait. Oh shit. All right, that came out wrong. Look, as long as the movie's fun, I'm gonna enjoy it. Two, if the movie has me guessing on what's gonna happen next throughout the entire film, then it does well. Otherwise, I would go back to playing car soccer. No, you didn't have to suck me off. You bit the head and disrespected me. Oh, yeah, let's not talk about that. Now, a very rare case is where I'm having fun with the movie and I'm still intrigued with the story all around, and then the ending just leaves me hanging, thinking. Was all this worth it? And that happened to me while watching Studio Ghibli's first ever CGI movie, Earwig and the Witch. Now let me get this out of the way first. I personally think this is a fine film. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just okay in the middle. Fine, okay, shouldn't offend anyone, but it is. A lot of these critics and reviewers are not telling the whole story, but all are in unison over one vital detail, myself included, and I'll talk about that later. But for now, I'll just say that it's an okay film. It's an okay film. And I will keep this spoiler free just because if you're expecting this film or you want to see something new or you're just bored out of your mind, this, this could be an option for you. It's not exactly the best option for you, but it's still an option. It's not, it's harmless. It's a fun little movie. Again, spoiler free. Don't worry, I'm not gonna say any, any vital plot details or anything like that. But for now, let's just start discussing the movie. Rolling around with my OP speed ball. Just kidding, it's a firework shell, but no one gives a shit! So, Earwig and the Witch is Studio Ghibli's first ever CGI film and their first release in six or seven years. Shut the fuck up, Red Turtle, no one cares, go kill yourself! It's directed by Goro Miyazaki, and if their name ever rings a bell, that's because he's a blood and bones of Hayao Miyazaki. The guy that made Studio Ghibli most known for his movies, you know, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, Ponyo, House Moving Castle, Boku no Pico. The guy made a lot, he's a living legend. So, Goro Miyazaki is the son of this icon of animation. So you think that maybe he'll be great or even greater than Hayao Miyazaki himself, right? That's where you're wrong. He didn't originally pursue directing or animating and pursued architecture instead because if you're gonna be making films in the same company as their pioneer and you're their son, that's a massive fucking shadow you're already in. And although he initially rejected it for many years, he decided to go ahead and make his directorial debut with Tales from Earth Sea, which now is considered the worst Ghibli movie. Not because it was horrifyingly bad or anything like that. No, it was, again, with Here We're Gonna Witches, it's a fine movie like this one as well. But compared to all the other greats that this studio has made, it's more like an okay-ish. I don't really like saying it's the, it's the worst one because it's not even that bad of a movie. Try putting this in in the middle of the Hollywood animated movies that are being made now, and you consider that a fucking masterpiece. Five years later, he made From Up on Poppy Hill, which, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was actually really good. I actually enjoyed it. It actually had some themes. It could actually be compared with the rest of the Ghibli movies that they made. It had a place. It had a place. It had a company. So, it was good. Sure, Hayao Miyazaki helped with the writing, but to be honest, I, I'd rather think that a uh, girl finally redeemed himself. Then three years later, he made a TV show using CGI and stuff like that, which wasn't wasn't bad from what I heard. I haven't watched it yet, but it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And seven years later, he makes Earwig and the Witch, which they spent four years creating. And in my opinion, it's not as bad as people are making it to be. Because people look at these numbers and think, oh, this, this shit sucks. Think about it this way. Fireworks got a higher rating than this. And that shit stuck. Probably don't pay attention to reviews and watch it for yourself if you're really that intrigued and, or you're just bored watching this video, so uh, good luck with that. While some of the criticism is fair, I don't really think giving this fucking movie a higher rating than this one will help anyone. So here we're gonna witch stars Erica, a 10 year old girl from the city of England. She lives in an orphanage her entire life and gets adopted all of a sudden by two witches to help as their assistant. Now first things first, which everyone has been has been craving over, is the animation good? And here's my personal preference. The animation is very impressive. I'm not gonna lie, I actually like the animation. I mean yeah, sure, sure some things could have been polished better, but overall, the animation was very, very good. Especially for their first ever CGI movie. This is really impressive. The characters look nice to look at, although albeit a bit plasticky. The places that they built 
from the ground up were really well done. The lighting, oh my god, the lighting is my absolute favorite part about it. Every shot they had with lighting was done real well. That's one big accomplishment they achieved. Now let's change pace and head over to the characters. And this is where we get into a bit of the issues that people were talking about. I dropped down the fourth grade to run drugs to support my dad. Erica in the film is kind of a manipulative dickwad. The only thing about her character I don't really like is, well, this is a nice change of pace for the Studio Ghibli female leads. They present her as a character who doesn't try to mature or won't ever mature at all. Unless some outer force pushes her into that. Bella Yaga is another character who I really enjoy. Now, there's only like three main characters in the entire film that, that they pay attention to, which is all right, you know, this is their first CGI movie. They don't want to go, they don't want to make too many characters. But here, uh, Bella Yaga is really well done. Bella Yaga is a character who drained the absolute piss out of me, but uh, for some reason wouldn't shut up about worms. Don't know what's up with that. And the character I liked the most in the film was the Mandrake. Not much is known about him, not much is explained about him, but overall the mystery around him is really interesting. And how they delved deeper into that was great, but the development of him was really good until we got to where the story had its main flaw. <laughs> Before I continue on, let me just give you some insight about the story they're adapting. Yes, this is an adaptation. This book was originally written by Deanna Wine Jones, who let's just say, if it weren't for her, Howl's Moving Castle would have never been made. Guys, it's a metaphor. She wrote the book. So Deanna Wine Jones was writing Earwig and the Witch by the time she died, and at the time when they released it, posthumously, it was considered an unfinished novel. I mean, obviously, the writer fucking died before they were able to finish it. You fucking scum! And that problem that was carried over in the unfinished book was carried over to the film. It's unfinished. And what do I mean unfinished? Well, let's just let's just say this. It, it needed a third act. It was a film that had a really strong first and second act, but missed a third. Now, I understand that four years to create 82 minutes, there's a lot of reasons on why that could have been the case. One could be that Goro Miyazaki did not want to take the risk of expanding the story like he did with his first film, Tales from Earth Sea, where he completely changed the adapted story into his own and left people very dissatisfied with his choices. And for Ewig and the Witch, he wanted to play it safe. It felt like he wanted to do something safe for his crew to see what limits they have, what advantages and disadvantages they have, and whether those can actually benefit them in the future. He mainly took a risk by not taking a risk. And that for me was really disappointing. So from Tears on Earth Sea, when he took that risk and it didn't pay off, he could have taken the same risk here and it could have really benefited from that. But overall, that's the main issue with the entire film. Uh, the third act, it, it, it's, it's non-existent. You know, it's, 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 not, it's non-existent. It doesn't fucking exist, it's invisible. And also the writing. The writing was pretty good, better than I could have expected. That's why the ending, I didn't see it coming. You know, the writing was moving along so smoothly, I didn't expect it to just stop there. There was no, there was no gears being made to stop at those points. And what they showed in the ending could have been the third act, because things were about to get really, really interesting. A lot of things would have happened at that point if they had continued it, but it didn't, and the characters are left undeveloped for the most part, which was really, was another thing that disappointed me as well. The characters were still underdeveloped, and not all of it came full circle. So overall, I I'd give this film a 6 out of 10. It's just mainly because I enjoyed it and I was still intrigued with the story that I'm giving it a 6. Because that ending, when I, when I talked about, really brought it down a lot. Not a bad entry, but also not great. <laughs> Watch Boku no Pico for a video and that'd be a great idea to do that, but the audio fucking messed up. All you can hear is all the moaning sounds from both guys. Yes, they're both dudes. Yes, they made the, the little boy as sexy as possible, which is really gross. I don't get it. I don't get it. The same guy who wrote this wrote fucking Full Metal Alchemist. That makes no fucking sense. How did this guy go from this to this? It makes no fucking sense.